you're about to have a nightmare in broad daylight, because if you ever saw this smile in the forest, you'd never forget it. Not a warm, friendly grin. No, this was a twisted sneer stretching all the way to the ears. A grin carved by two ivory daggers like the twin blades of death itself. This was the smile of the saber-toothed cat. A smile that could freeze blood mid-flow. A smile that turned the ice age into a kingdom of fear. It didn't promise a greeting. It warned of a death already decided. But here's the twist. Was this nightmare with a grin truly the king of the ice age? Or have we been crowning the wrong beast all along? And here's the most brutal question of them all. Could it be that the very thing that made it iconic, those magnificent, perfect saber teeth, were also the curse that doomed it? It's time to peel back the icy curtain and uncover the truth behind the most terrifying smile nature ever crafted. Is perfection the pinnacle of evolution? Or is it sometimes the beginning of an unstoppable downfall? Welcome to today's journey. Saber-tooth cat how deadly were Smilodin's saber teeth, decoding his ultimate killing machine. Forget everything you think you know. Erase that image of a giant striped tiger with oversized fangs. That's one of the most common mistakes we make about the saber-tooth cat the truth. It's harsher but infinitely more fascinating. Smilodon was not part of the modern big cat family. Despite the familiar feline look, it belonged to an entirely separate evolutionary branch, a long extinct subfamily known as Macerodontini. This creature wasn't just another predator. It was nature's bold experiment, a high stakes evolutionary gamble that pushed specialization to the brink of madness. Let's put it into perspective with a surprising analogy. If lions armed with crushing bites and the power of the pride are the heavyweight champions of survival, then Smilodon was something else entirely. Think stealth assassin with daggers for teeth. It didn't rely on long chases or brute force bites. Its weaponry was more refined, more surgical, and far more fragile. Take a closer look at those legendary saber teeth. In the North American Smilodon Fatalis, they could stretch up to seven inches long. But in the South American giant Smilodon Populator, they reached a jaw-dropping 11 inches, so long they jutted out of the mouth, even when the jaws were clenched shut. Sharp, menacing, but beneath their terrifying beauty lies a fatal flaw. Unlike the thick, conical canines of lions or tigers, Smilodon sabers were flat, thin, and sometimes edged with microscopic serrations. Less like battlefield weaponry, more like scalpels. A single wrong angle, a mistimed strike, a heavy collision, and those fangs could snap like glass. To understand why Smilodon evolved in such a strange direction, we need to step into the world it once ruled. The Pleistocene Epoch, stretching from about 2.5 million to 10,000 years ago, was a time of extremes. Glacial and interglacial periods came and went, reshaping the Earth's climate and landscapes in sweeping, brutal cycles. It was a kingdom ruled by megafauna, giant mammals whose bones now lie silent in fossil vaults, whispering stories of a forgotten age. Picture this, Woolly mammoths lumbering through the snow, their curved tusks plowing the ice in search of dry grass. Alongside them, equally massive mastodons, forest dwellers that preferred open woodlands. Ancient bison roamed in herds, sporting enormous horns and temperaments far more aggressive than their modern descendants. And prehistoric horses galloped across the plains like living thunder. This was a walking buffet of protein an evolutionary pressure cooker that set the stage for the rise of a predator like no other, Smilodon. In a world of giants, you needed something more than speed to bring them down. The agility of a cheetah, the chase strategy of a tiger, useless against a juvenile mammoth or an adult ground sloth, both as massive as tanks. Smilodon chose a different path, the path of brute strength 
and a surgical death blow. Forget the image of a graceful, slinking cat. Smilodon was a muscle-bound machine forged for face-to-face -face combat. Its skeleton says it all. If you ever stand before a mounted Smilodon fossil, the sabers might grab your attention first. But it's the overall build that truly stuns, especially the front half of the body. Its shoulders and neck were incredibly developed, with massive muscle attachment sites hinting at the kind of explosive force it could unleash. Its front limbs were thick, short, and heavily built, completely different from the long, slender legs of pursuit predators like the cheetah. Smilodon's body was optimized not for speed, but for grappling and pinning prey like a heavyweight wrestler. And its body mass backed it up. The North American species, Smilodon fatalis, typically weighed between 350 to 620 pounds, comparable to a large male lion or Siberian tiger. But its South American cousin, Smilodon populator, was on another level. Standing up to four feet tall at the shoulder and weighing in at an estimated 800 to over 900 pounds, it was among the largest cats ever to walk the earth, outweighing anything alive today. Then there's the tail, a small detail that speaks volumes. In modern big cats, long tails are essential for balance during high-speed pursuits and sharp turns. Smilodon's tail, in contrast, was stubby and short, yet another clue that it wasn't built for marathon chases. Its top speed may not have been impressive, and it almost certainly couldn't sustain it for long. Instead, its hunting strategy relied on stealth and raw power in tight quarters. Smilodon didn't roam open plains scanning for prey in the distance. It was a master of ambush. It would lie in wait until the moment was right. Then, in a flash of violence, it would pounce, slam the prey to the ground, and move in for the kill. And this is where its terrifying superpower came into play. Smilodon could open its jaws to an astonishing 90-degree angle. That's far wider than any modern big cat. Why such an extreme ability? Because those absurdly long saber teeth needed room to operate, space to clear the lower jaw and strike true without snagging or shattering. The final blow wasn't a bone-crushing bite to the spine like a lion would deliver. Smilodon's killing method was far more elegant and far more unsettling. Using its enormously powerful neck muscles, it would deliver a lightning-fast, deeply targeted stab with both saber teeth, aimed at soft, vascular areas. Its targets, the carotid artery, the trachea, major abdominal vessels. A quick, cold, efficient death, minimizing risk to the predator and more importantly, preserving its precious, fragile weapons. In the golden age of megafauna, this razor-sharp hunting strategy catapulted Smilodon to the very top of the food chain. It was nothing short of a masterpiece of selective evolution, a finely tuned biological machine designed with ruthless precision for one purpose only, to take down giants. Every muscle fiber, every bone, every inch of those saber teeth existed for that single brutal task. And it worked. The overwhelming success of Smilodon is etched in stone through its widespread fossil record across both North and South America for nearly 2.5 million years. But as we've hinted, that very perfection carried within it the seeds of its own destruction. Extreme specialization, while a ticket to dominance in a stable ecosystem, becomes a death sentence when that world begins to shift. And the twist was hidden right in its most iconic feature, those magnificent saber teeth. Symbols of power, yes, but also silent harbingers of doom. They were engineered to slice cleanly through soft flesh, only after the prey had been subdued. But they were far too long, far too delicate to survive twisting forces or bone-jarring impacts. One wrong move, one ill-timed struggle, one misplaced strike, and those evolutionary marvels could snap like twigs. For Smilodon, losing even one of its saber teeth wasn't just a handicap. It was almost a death sentence. 
Without them, it could no longer dispatch large prey with surgical precision. It might be forced to hunt smaller, quicker animals, prey it wasn't built to chase. Or worse, it might have to scavenge, competing against faster, more adaptable carnivores in a brutal, unforgiving race for scraps. And here's the part that shocks most people. Smilodon wasn't evolution's ultimate killing machine in the broadest sense. It was more like a high-wire act, a creature walking the razor-thin line between dominance and extinction. Its entire existence hinged on one hyper-specialized toolkit and one very specific kind of prey. This was evolution's ultimate all-or-nothing gamble. And then, the world began to change. Between 15,000 and 10,000 years ago, the last ice age drew to a dramatic close. A rapid, planet-wide warming event was underway. As Earth's temperature surged, the colossal ice sheets blanketing much of North America and Europe began to melt. Water from the melting glaciers poured into the oceans, causing sea levels to rise and submerge vast stretches of coastal land, redrawing the map of the continents. Vegetation shifted rapidly. The climate turned wetter. Seasons became more pronounced. For the megafauna, this was nothing short of a catastrophe there once familiar habitats vanished. Food sources changed or disappeared altogether. Woolly mammoths, mastodons, giant ground sloths, prehistoric horses, ancient camels. The very backbone of the Pleistocene ecosystem began to collapse. One by one, these giants dwindled in number, edging toward extinction in a sweeping event known as the Quaternary Extinction Event. And as nature fell into chaos, Smilodon faced a threat it had never known before, a competitor unlike any other in its evolutionary history. Humans. Homo sapiens had journeyed out of Africa and spread across the continents. They didn't have claws like Smilodon. They didn't have saber teeth. They didn't have raw muscle powerful enough to bring down a bison in a single blow. But they had something far more dangerous, intelligence. They hunted in groups with sharpened stone-tipped spears that could be thrown from a distance, and they controlled fire. If you were a Smilodon, used to brute force in close combat, this new threat would have seemed alien. These were not animals that fought fair. They didn't need strength or speed or terrifying size. Just a handful of upright, soft-skinned beings working together, hurling razor-sharp projectiles from afar, waving fire to corral or confuse, that was enough. Enough to injure you. Enough to steal your kill. Enough, even, to end your life. Many scientists now believe that human hunting pressure was a key driver in the extinction of both megafauna and apex predators, like Smilodon. Now place Smilodon in this rapidly unraveling world. First, its primary food source was vanishing. The slow, lumbering giants it had evolved to hunt were dying out, replaced by smaller, faster prey like deer. Second, its ultimate weapon had become a liability. Long, fragile, and unwieldy, they were poorly suited for pursuing or subduing quick and agile prey. The risk of breaking a tooth during a failed takedown sword. What once was a perfect killing tool had become a cumbersome relic. Third, its powerhouse body was now a shackle, too heavy, too slow. No match for nimble deer darting through dense forests, its earth-shaking strength was wasted on prey that never stood still, and its poor endurance made food harder to find in an increasingly fragmented landscape. Smilodon's fate had been sealed by the very success that once made it invincible. Its hyper-specialization in hunting megafauna had locked it into a strategy that no longer applied. It was a master of a dying craft, a top-tier expert in a niche that had ceased to exist, and when that niche vanished, it was left stranded by its own evolutionary perfection. A tragic, textbook example of what scientists call an evolutionary cul-de-sac. The former king, now dethroned, not by a rival beast, 
but by the quiet, relentless force of change. Perhaps the most haunting chapter in the story of Smiladin's final days is told not in ice or stone, but in asphalt at the famous Labria Tar Pits in Los Angeles, California. Now, forget those images you might have from movies bubbling, boiling cauldrons of tar. The reality was far more insidious. These were natural asphalt seeps where sticky, thick petroleum slowly oozed up from deep underground. Over time, these treacherous pools would get camouflaged by water, fallen leaves, and dust, making them look deceptively like solid ground or just a harmless puddle. Picture this scene. A young mastodon, maybe an ancient bison, perhaps lost or just desperately thirsty, approaches what looks like an inviting pool of water. It takes a step in and realizes its fatal mistake far too late. Its feet sink deep into the thick, inescapable asphalt goo. The more it struggles, the deeper it becomes trapped, its desperate cries echoing through the ice age air. Those cries, for a hungry predator like Smilodon, that was like a dinner bell, an irresistible signal of seemingly easy prey. Lured in by the sounds of the struggling herbivore, they'd move in for the kill, only to find themselves ensnared in the exact same hidden trap. The relentless asphalt would grip their powerful legs, pulling them down, immobilizing them just like their intended meal. Over thousands of years, this tragic scenario played out again and again, trapping layer upon layer of ice age life. While the soft tissues eventually decayed, the anaerobic or oxygen poor environment of the asphalt preserved the bones in astonishing detail. Labria tar pits became a horrific mass grave, yes, but simultaneously, an invaluable scientific treasure trove. It holds millions of fossils, offering us an unparalleled, high-definition glimpse into the ecosystem of Ice Age North America. And here's something truly remarkable. The number of predator fossils unearthed at Labria vastly outnumbers the herbivores. It's a classic predator trap. And towering amongst those predators, Fossils of Smilodon fatalis are overwhelmingly dominant, representing thousands upon thousands of individuals pulled from these pits. This staggering concentration doesn't just narrate the tragedy of their demise in these natural traps. It stands as a powerful, final testament to their intense, unwavering predatory drive, fierce right down to their very last breath. Today, Smilodon exists mainly as silent skeletons in museum halls, brought back to life through stunning digital reconstructions, or as fearsome characters in movies and games. Yet its roar seems to echo still, a faint sound carried across the vast expanse of the Ice Age. It stands as an eternal reminder. In the relentless game of evolution, there are no fixed rules. Adaptation is the ultimate key, and no rain, no matter how powerful, lasts forever. Even perfection, it seems, has an expiration date. And so, our journey exploring the world of Smilodon comes to a close. We hope that through this story, you've come to see beyond the image of just a fearsome predator and perhaps glimpse the fascinating complexity and the poignant fate of one of prehistory's truly great icons. Because the story of Smilodon isn't one of evolutionary failure. It was a staggering success story, spanning more than two million years. Its extinction isn't some embarrassing end point. It's a natural part of the grand, unending cycle of life and death on Earth. Countless millions of species have existed and vanished before. Smilodon is simply one of the most spectacular and memorable chapters in that immense saga. Thank you for joining us on this journey back through time. Goodbye for now, and see you again in the next story about the mysteries of our planet.